Hello everybody. Welcome to my first tutorial on think like a scientist, act like a coach. Uh, my name is Coach Bot, and today I'm going to talk to you about cardiovascular adaptations to dynamic resistance training. Why weights don't cut it. Essentially, dynamic resistance training is strength training. So um, a lot of the textbooks in the literature will call it this, just so that way um, it's clearly classified. But uh, if you're sitting at home and you're listening to this, I just want you to imagine that uh, an athlete is following, you know, a traditional uh, or typical resistance training program. We're going to look a little bit uh, closer at the cardiovascular system and how it might or might not adapt to this type of training. So let's get started. So there's four components of adaptation to uh, this particular uh, stimulus being weight training. And they're broken into these four categories, cardiac dimensions, then we've got stroke volume and heart rate, blood pressure and maximal oxygen consumption. Now that's a lot of big vocabulary and I realize that. So I'm gonna go through each one of them individually, explain what it is, and then talk a little bit about um, what exactly is going on if we're following a resistance training program and what kind of adaptations we might expect to see. So the first one I want to highlight are cardiac dimensions. And believe it or not, with the different forms of training or different stimulations, our heart can actually structurally remodel itself. So if we look here at the picture on the left, we have a heart of an anaerobically trained athlete. So this would be maybe a, an athlete that was a weightlifter or a powerlifter or exclusively resistance trained with fairly heavy loads. And what you see is you have a, a thickening of the myocardium, so the, the mus musculature that basically encases the heart. There's not much change in the size of the chambers. These are the chambers here as compared to that of an untrained individual. So if we were to measure this area here and compare it to the resistance trained person, we really wouldn't see an enlargement, but what we would see is a, a really a more muscular heart. Now you're probably wondering why, what's the mechanism of this adaptation? Well, essentially when the heart has to work against heavy, heavy external resistance, the heart will actually uh, incur an and this adaptation because you're actually creating hypertrophy in the heart muscle. The heart muscle size is actually growing. And why do we even have this external resistance? Well, if you think about it this way, if you're weight training, you're actually temporarily mechanically occluding blood flow to the muscle that you're working. So it's like you're sort of strangling or cutting off blood supply to different areas of the body. And so the heart's kind of going, well, I still have to get blood there. So I'm going to work extra hard to do that job. Now, conversely, if you look at the endurance trained athlete here on the right, you don't see this adaptation. In fact, you actually see an enlargement of the chambers, specifically the left and the right ventricle here, which collect a lot of blood and then send the blood either to the body or to the lungs for oxygenation. But that's not the focus of our talk today. So that's cardiac dimensions. Now we're going to look at something called stroke volume and heart rate. I think you're all familiar with heart rate. That's, you know, how many times the heart is going to beat per minute. And stroke volume is really the amount of blood that's pumped out every time the heart beats. And that's a, a huge adaptation when we do endurance training um, with the heart. But with resistance training, we actually really don't know much about whether or not stroke volumes improved. We do know that resting heart rate goes down slightly. And we do know that, that the heart rate at sub-maximal uh, levels will go down for the same resistance exercise. So let me give you an example. If you were to do you know, three sets of eight squats, let's say 75% one RM, uh, week one of a training program and had a heart rate monitor on, let's say your heart rate was, you know, 150 beats per minute, that perhaps after six months or so of training and you did exactly the same three, three times eight at the same load, so not 75% of your new max, but 75%, the same load you did very, very first week, you might see a decrease in your heart rate response to that load you did, you know, after uh, a certain period of time that you did that very first week. So hopefully I haven't talked to you around in a circle there, but essentially we do see a decrease in submaximal heart rate for the same resistance. 
Now, blood pressure, blood pressure is actually kind of interesting because, um, you know, a lot of times people avoid resistance training because of, of hypertension and that's fair. And you should, you know, achieve medical clearance from a physician before you prescribe resistance training to somebody with hypertension. But those people that do exhibit it do, um, you know, incur a lower resting blood pressure from resistance training. So that's great. You know, it's really, really good news. And it, we also end up with a lower blood pressure to the same relative workload of resistance exercise. Exactly the same adaptation you see with the uh, heart rate. So blood pressure and heart rate, you know, run in tandem with one another. And blood pressure, of course, is, is the measurement of force applied to the walls of the artery. Now, the last uh, aspect or adaptation we can look at is maximal oxygen consumption. And this is sort of the million dollar question you know if I do weight training instead of cardio because I hate cardio um, am I going to get fitter from a vo2 max standpoint and the answer is no um, or very very small increases we're talking like four percent up to maybe nine percent increase in vo2 max and that's assuming you have a very low vo2 max to begin with so if we look down here at the poor and very poor values of amongst men and women you know if, if a female had a vo2 at around 25 to start that's you know a pretty sedentary person so of course if they start going to the gym three days a week doing some resistance training we might see an increase in vo2 max which is great that's definitely has implications for good health but um, it's certainly not a you know significant improvement in, in endurance performance there is some evidence to suggest if the if people undergo circuit training there might be a slightly uh, larger increase in vo2 max but again you're not going to see the vo2 max increases you would see doing exclusive endurance exercise so the take home message really with this tutorial is that we want to reserve strength training and dynamic resistance training to improve strength and power. It is not meant to be a, mo a mode of exercise or a choice of, of training to improve the cardiovascular system. You know, there's lots of blogs out there, magazine articles, what have you, that may make these suggestions that you should stop running and start lifting and this is the be all end all. Well, you know, Sure, if body composition changes your goal, you could certainly get there by doing resistance training exclusively with you know a sound uh, nutrition plan. But if you want to become more cardiovascular fit, you need to uh, do that type of exercise. And you know we'll investigate different modalities of that later on in some of the other tutorials. So I thought I'd start with this. Um, hopefully you learned something, and uh, hopefully this maybe uh, inspired you to read and learn a little bit more. All right, you have a great day. Bye now.